Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, to this video where I am going to feature this very interesting historical reissue that has been put out by Seagull a few years ago. Uh, now this is the Seagull 1963 uh, Air Force chronograph reissue. Um, this um, version in particular, uh, I'm not really sure what the designation is, but Seagull website seems to call it the FKJB, so that's you know what I'm going to designate it. Uh, perhaps this is better served by a description in that it is a 38 millimeter diameter case with uh, acrylic crystal on the front and uh, a solid case back. There's no uh, you know, display back on this one. Uh, they do come in various other versions, including a 42 millimeter, uh, as well as with hardened mineral crystal and sapphire, uh, and with uh, various forms of display backs as well. So, you know, there, there's a few versions of this. This version uh, doesn't come with the display back and uh, specifically comes with that lovely, that great looking acrylic crystal, which, which I've really, uh, enjoy looking at actually this adds so much character to the watch uh, so the Tianjin uh, watch factory um, you know this particular uh, case does kind of homage that uh, that was famous for being the first producer of Chinese watches way back in 1961 and uh, under project 304 they were mandated to produce a chronograph for uh, the aviation forces and in 63 uh, they produced uh, quite a number of them which were distributed throughout uh, the armed forces so you know this kind of like harkens back uh, to to those days uh, now the watch is not in its original strap uh, this is the original strap that it comes in which is a pretty boring drab uh, you know kind of like I think they call this an olive green NATO of dubious quality I have to say uh, you know it's showing some signs of fraying there uh, I'm not sure how good the ceiling is uh, I guess I can say that it is stitched in uh, but uh, really this easily is the worst part of uh, the whole package and probably not something that you're particularly interested in you're really paying uh, for what's in uh, the case and the, the, the casing itself of this particular watch uh, now this one again is a collaboration with just one more watch channel and thank you again Jody for making this available uh, go out there and check out his channel uh, you know Jody does some fantastic videos and he's got a very interesting feel that he's developed for his channel and he's doing very well so go over there, check it out and give him your support uh, and subscribe if you like his content which I would be very surprised if you don't um, uh, Jody has chosen to put this on uh, you know a third party leather strap which I think uh, is a much better choice for this particular watch all right so now let's let's get into the the actual watch itself in here is the Seagull ST1901 manual wine column wheel chronograph movement that we have here it is a 21600 beat per hour movement uh, 21 jewels uh, that you can see designated on the I guess below that star there 21 Zwan, uh, 21 joules 41 hour power reserve uh, when fully wound uh, it's got the running seconds at the nine o'clock position and it's got a 30 minute totalizer at the three o'clock position that you can see there the case here is 38 millimeters across I've already mentioned that it is a relatively thick piece at uh, 14 millimeters on the thickness uh, and it does have a uh, fairly appropriate 18 millimeter lux to suit uh, this particular case size, I think. Uh, and it is very, you know, very much a watch that lends itself uh, well to swapping out straps. And, and I think if you get this, you wouldn't keep it on that NATO. You would pretty much uh, swap it out as soon as you uh, probably receive it. Uh, the surfaces, interestingly, are fully polished. Uh, you can probably see that already, you know, the, the case itself. Uh, it is fully polished all over in a very utilitarian pushes there you can see uh, of course at the two and four o'clock positions and a very utilitarian crown you can see the crown has a relatively large diameter to allow very easy manual winding 
you know, at the default position that you can see there, you know, it just winds it whenever you grab it and turn it in a clockwise position. Um, the, the, the case back in this case, you know, the, again, comes in various versions, but the case back is brushed in contrast to the actual case itself. Uh, this one is uh, engraved with, uh, you know, the same markings as that on the face. And now uh, this is Zhongguo, right? These two words there is China. And then uh, these five words is Tianjin Shou Biao Chang. Now that's Tianjin Watch Factory. Now that's that's designation there for for uh, these words, which you see repeated again at the six o'clock position on the face, uh, as well as uh, you know these are the exact same words on the box that it comes in. Okay, so uh, moving on to the 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 doll itself, you know, really is this part of the beauty here. Um, it, it's a gold tint pearlescent, I suppose you might describe that uh, as that dial. It's got those gold tone markers, which is a really nice uh, applied marker uh, touch there, you know, numerals at 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then you've got those arrows uh, at the, the 1, the 5, the 7, and the 11. And of course, the, the circles of the sub dials uh, cut out the 3 and the 9. Uh, markers where, where they would otherwise be sitting there. Uh, printed uh, chapter ring in black around the outside uh, and I don't know how much detail is coming through here but th those seconds uh, or those minute markings are actually divided into uh, one-fifth uh, of a minute or I guess if you look at the chronograph uh, hand that's running along that's one-fifth of a second if you, if you stop it that's the resolution uh, that you're kind of getting there. Uh, the hands, you know, simple utilitarian blue rectangles, uh, a red striking contrast uh, chronograph running hand, of course. And then on the 9 o'clock subdial, you have a kind of a stylized second hand that's a running seconds with that uh, kind of like little counterbalance arrow there. And then you have a much more simple uh, totalizer hand at the three o'clock subdial, the 30 minute totalizer subdial there. Okay, so that's that's really what you're getting on this dial. Uh, there's no loom, uh, and I believe that's, uh, I guess, in homage to the original 1963 uh, chronograph. You know, there's absolutely no loom anywhere on this watch. Uh, and again, just showing you that lovely, you know, it just lends such a great character. You know, the distortions you get with this acrylic uh, that is that is very distinct to mineral or sapphire uh, that that uh, glass that you're getting there. Uh, of course, acrylic uh, is easily scratched, but uh, the counterbalance to that is that you can get uh, certain substances that will allow you to polish out scratches uh, should they occur on this watch. Um, we've talked about the band. I'm not going to mention any more uh, about that 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 NATO that it comes in. Uh, so, you know, that's really where we are in terms of describing the watch. Now, what has been the best things I found about this watch? Well, you're getting a classic column wheel manual wine chronograph for 300 US. That, that's really what you can grab this watch for. Um, it is a fantastic vintage reissue of a historic piece, you know, the, the movement uh, the design of the watch, the, the size of it, you know, 38 millimeter classic. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the acrylic glass as well that they've chosen to throw in there. Uh, it, it, it's really a great piece. And I think any, any collector can be proud to hold one in the collection. You know, it's got so much, uh, uh, I guess, uh, homage, a uh, recollection of the original historic piece. And yet this is... Uh, done by you know the really uh, the the original chinese uh, manufacturer as close as you can get uh, so you know it is not a knockoff by any means it is a true historic reissue slash homage now what's uh, the weaknesses of this particular piece well you know the uh, last mentioned the band you know a lot of them do come in natos and i, I suspect the quality is going to be questionable but you're not paying for the band you're paying for the piece itself uh, this model, uh, unfortunately, doesn't have a display back, uh, and I think with a movement as historic as this one, or at least a, a, a 
reissue of a movement that is as, as historic as the 304, you really want to see. I, I wish I could see it, you know, just to witness that column wheel in action. Yeah, you know, personally, if I picked up this watch, I would be picking up uh, a model with a display back, you know, that, that's my personal preference. Uh, of course, uh, the plain ones uh, are more utilitarian, but, you know, my preference would have been to go for a display. Um, and, and then it's it's a vintage watch with vintage trappings, you know, it, it's a smaller size, uh, it, it's winding uh, manually, uh, there's no rotor in this watch, you know, so it's not going to uh, wind automatically on your wrist. You have to wind this every day if you want to keep it running. Um, it, it's got acrylic glass, which is going to be prone to scratching, particularly as it is a dome, you know, that, that's even more proud to scratching. Uh, and there's zero loom on this. So if you're a person who prefers the modern trappings of modern watches, this may not be a watch that you enjoy using, you know, for, for, for all the character that it has. You know, I think it has, it, it oozes character. Uh, there are things that some people may not like if you're used to kind of the more modern features that you find in today's watches. So guys, thank you for watching. Thank you again, Jody, for making this available. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out content every week. I'm learning new things about horology all the time and I share it right here on the channel aiming to always be objective and unbiased. Guys, thank you again for watching and as always, I will catch you next time.